Welcome to Cloud 941. I'm Ron Filipkowski, the only live talk show on Sarasota politics. And of course, tonight we're doing our big show on the Sarasota City Commission election, which is tomorrow. Hopefully everybody's going to get out to the polls and vote. And we're going to get into the topic tonight. We have sitting uh, uh, Sarasota City Commissioner Ken Sheelan, who's running for re-election, as our guest. But first, my commentaries. Uh, two weeks ago, we unfortunately had to make one of our friends, Scott Peterson, the sports editor of the Herald Tribune, our weasel of the week, because of his biased coverage in the Herald Tribune in favor of the Gators. We Florida State fans continue to be dismayed and disappointed that we can hardly ever get in the pages of the Herald Tribune. So, and we pointed out that this year our basketball team is clearly better than the Gators, and we still cannot get any coverage of the sports section. This is the front page today. Anybody see right here? Knowles Seminoles, a story about the Seminole basketball team on the front page of the paper. So already we're, we got them shaking in their boots down there on uh, Main Street and they're, they're, they're changing their coverage and giving the Seminoles some respect finally in the sports page. So we'll lay off Scott for a while. Now, my prediction, <laughs> election day tomorrow. Uh, listen, Ken, Ken doesn't know there were 10 races uh, in uh, 2000 or uh, in November. 10 races, one presidential, nine local races. Night, the night before the election, I had my big board. I predicted all 10 races from president on down. What was I? Nine out of 10? I was 10 for 10. Oh, 10 for 10. Hit Whoa. them all. 10 for 10. Whoa. So now I'm going to predict, first of all, my, my predictions for tomorrow in the Sarasota City Commission race. Now, I have to admit, the city of Sarasota is a weird place, and it's very, very difficult. I could, I could nail for you, you down the Comus, Northport, Venice all day long, but the city of Sarasota is a, is a strange place, and it's tough to predict. But here's my prediction. First of all, nobody's going to get 50%. There's going to be a runoff. There's a lot of candidates. And so we will have a runoff election, and the three finalists are going to be our guests tonight, Ken Sheelan, Suzanne Atwell, and Paul Caragiulio. That's, our, that's my predictions. Those are the three finalists. We'll see if I'm right, and we can hear about it next week. Well, we'll find out tomorrow. So now our guest is City Commissioner Ken Sheelan. Welcome to the show. Well, I'm glad to be here. Thanks, Ron. All right. Ken, tell us a little bit about your background. Well, I have a long career in government. I spent 34 years working for the federal government in the Food and Drug Administration, and uh, that whole career was in the field enforcement organization of the agency. So my perspective is always a regulatory perspective. It's always fact-gathering, research, let's find out what the truth is, what's the proof. And, and I, it, it's, it's kind of a habit, become a habit with me, and that's how I approach the job at the city commission table. After I spent the 34 years with the Food and Drug Administration, I spent another 10 years consulting for pharmaceutical manufacturers in the U.S. and Canada and Europe, and it was on regulatory matters, compliance with FDA requirements. And so even though I'm working for private industry, I'm doing pretty much the same thing that I did with the FDA. Okay. Uh, I, I was interpreting the problems that they had and what they needed to do to come into compliance with FDA requirements. And during the last uh, five years of that 10-year consulting effort, I was appointed to the city planning board. And I got a lot of wonderful experience there because the most difficult, the most complicated, the most controversial and complex decisions that the city commission ever makes are land development decisions. And I learned how that process works. I learned what's in the code, and I learned how to apply that code to these decisions. And then four years ago, of course, I was elected to the city commission. Okay, now I'm going to ask you what we call Clout 941 soul-searching questions. Yes. Just find a little bit about you as a person, okay? I'll throw you some curveballs. First, Tell me a person in history, maybe a famous person that you'd most like to sit down and have dinner with and have a conversation with. Well, I think James Madison. Um, uh, several years ago, I, I did a tour of the plantations in Virginia. I started out in Williamsburg, and then I went down the James River, and I stopped at various plantations, and I went to Charlottesville. And, you know, Thomas Jefferson's home, Monticello, is there, but very close by is James Madison's home which was 
actually owned for a long period of time by a member of the DuPont family. And since I'm originally from Wilmington, Delaware, it had kind of a dual interest for me. And uh, I bought a biography of James Madison while I was there. And I really enjoyed the intellectual uh, effort that he made to parse out how our government should be developed, how it should be formed, what its structure should be. And actually, I've applied some of his ideas, uh, particularly recently when we had the supermajority vote on comprehensive plan changes. I took the position that uh, supermajority votes were undemocratic, and I quoted James Madison. Uh, you know, Madison was one of the authors of the Federalist paper, right. papers. So he has. Uh, you know, Ken, we had developer Pat Neal on the show, and he uh -huh. said James Madison, too. Really? And we had a discussion about him, yeah. That's interesting. One of the most underrated uh, fa uh, founding fathers. Don't right. You think? He was a little guy like me. <laughs> <laughs> Not Irish, but he was a little guy. He wasn't as feisty as I am. Okay. <laughs> but he was kind of a quiet man who, who was a deep thinker and thought a lot about how this country should be shaped. How about your all-time favorite movie? Wow. That's a tough one. You know, I have a degree in theater as oh. well as a major in biology. I have this right brain, left brain conflict going on. <laughs> uh, but... Um, I've always enjoyed Broadway shows, and um, I, it's, it's really tough to pick one because it's usually the last one I saw. But let's see, there, there, was, a, there was a film recently, well, I, I, I'm not good at remembering film names, but anyway, uh, anything to you do like with Broadway. a Broadway show, okay. yeah. I get it. How about your favorite band? What kind of music do you like? Well, I, I'm, you know, I'm... 69 years old, so <laughs> it's uh, it's a little difficult for me to relate to some uh, to to rock and roll because rock and roll was just coming, and Bill Haley and the Comets uh, were just becoming popular when I was in high school, and uh, I was Glenn more Miller into fan? the ballads. Well, not Glenn Miller; that's a little too old for me. <laughs> I'm kidding, but but uh, I like ballads. Okay, all right. All right, we've got to go to a break. We'll come back. A couple more soul-searching questions, then we'll try to get to some issues tonight. Okay, good. <laughs>